Welcome to the Global Chamber of Commerce Young Global Leader Initiative 2023. My name is Katie Keith and I am the Executive Director for the Global Chamber here in London and I'm more than delighted to be hosting our very first session for the Young Global Leader Initiative focused on developing your personal brand. Now, I just wanted to say a warm welcome to all of you for joining us live today. We have a very interactive and fun session in store for you. So please pop your questions in the chat box. We've got Chris, who's going to be answering questions on the go. We've got Fenella, who is our keynote speaker, and I'm going to introduce her a bit more later um, to answer in our open Q&A session. And I just wanted to say a big hello to those who are joining us through the recording online. Uh, please interact with us just as equally, send us questions, reach out to us after watching the recording. We want to hear from you. Before I introduce the session today, I'd just like to share a little bit more about our Young Global Leader Initiative and where it stems from. You know, over the past few years, all of our, us as executive directors and experts in the Global Chamber have delivered lots of different events to help young global leaders and even experienced leaders to advance in their business. And off the back of that, with lots of feedback from the community, we have spearheaded a project between us globally to bring together this program for 2023. It's going to consist of 10 amazing sessions from this month. And at the end of the sessions, you will actually receive a participation certificate. So that is really exciting for the young global leaders out there that want to demonstrate some of the extra skills that they've developed. Now, this is going to be an interactive session, so I'm going to ask you all to mute and just type your questions in the box until we open up for Q&A. And also, just to talk about some of the program um, options that we're going to do, and you can actually register now. I'm going to share my screen. There's a couple of barcodes here, so if you'd like to learn a bit more about the program, register for the next session, please do whilst I'm introducing today's session. Uh, Cesar, I might just ask if you can mute everybody, please, uh, just to avoid any background noise before we commence the session today. Um, so what are we here to learn today? Well, our Young Global Leader Initiative is focused on your personal brand. So we have experts from House Brands today who will be taking you on a journey to build your personal brand as a Young Global Leader through their Why Me self-branding toolkit. It really is one of a kind. I've experienced it myself. And it really has helped me as an experienced leader to redevelop my own brand. We can then look to our special guest speaker, Sarah Clay, who has recorded an information session on how to uh, take your brand out to the social network. So LinkedIn, for example, uh, is one of the main places where we export our brand. It's like having a Rembrandt and never hanging it on the wall. So we're going to hear from Sarah and the team at House Brands a little bit later. But we've also got some amazing young global leaders on the call today, and we're going to be inviting you to have a conversation with us about what are you doing with your own personal brand, what ideas do you have for others in the group, and what questions do you have for us to help you to advance that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Fenella McCarthy, Head of Insight and Strategy at House Brands, Fenella is a highly experienced brand and communications consultant who provides creative, practical and focused solutions to meet clients' needs. Now, Fenella really is a strategic thinker who identifies real business issues before taking actionable direction with, with those that she works with. And with a wide range of experience, not only in the UK, but also internationally, Fenella is used to working pe with people from many different cultural backgrounds at board and presidential level. So Fenella, I'm absolutely delighted to have your expertise with us today to share more about bringing our personal brand to life. So I'd like to hand over to you to take us through the next part. Well, thank you very much, um, Katie. I'm just going to share screen and get my, my presentation up. And then we can, right, I hope you're all seeing my screen. Very good. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. And thank you for those very kind words, Katie. So I'm not going to talk for too long, but what I want to do is to talk about 
personal brand. Obviously, I have a lot of experience in organizational brand for not for profits, for countries themselves, and for commercial organizations. But recently, there's been a huge move towards developing personal brands and taking control of who you are. And so, what I'm going to talk about is a little bit about what it is. And then how do you create one? And there's plenty of time for um, questions and answers. There's a space you'll see, it says big Q&A. So that's when we, we get there, but do put things in the, the chat as we go through, if you want to. My colleague, Chris is there, he'll either answer or say, we're gonna cover that in Q&A. Brilliant, so let's start. So as we all know, it's a tough world out there. And especially if you want to be um, a global leader, it's all about, trying to um, be focused and be clear about who you are. In fact, I was talking to one of the leading accountancy firms the other day, and just to show how truly competitive it is, they have about, they take on, they're one of the big three, about 1,500 to 2,000 graduate trainees every year, they get 50,000 applicants. So can you imagine that is huge. So in order to do that, there'll be lots of people who have the same kind of qualifications in there, but you have to find another way of really standing out because what you actually want to be, maybe I should make you all a bit smaller so you can actually see my slides. Oh, I won't be able to do that. You want to come out on top because that's what you want to do. You want to, and you don't have to be super dog to do that, but you do have to really put some thought into um, how you are going to um, stand out, what you're going to say yourself, how you're going to position yourself to use a, a brand term in order to do that, because that's where you want to be. And as people who have ambition as young leaders, you really need to find a way of doing that, which is effective for you. Now, of course, I can't see it's all going pear shaped. There we go. We, we can see everything, Vanilla. No, I couldn't move on because my arrow was hidden by the people, you see. So, so how do you stand out? You know, and funny enough, I was talking to um, a recruitment agency, somebody I know there, and she was saying one of the issues they have is always trying to um, ensure that people are different and show their differences because everybody wants to be a clone and you can go along and get your CV written or whatever or you can use them um, was it GB chat now chat GBK or whatever it's called um, and you all end up the same and that is not what people what people want employers don't want everyone to be the same because a team is much stronger if you have different types of people on there, if you have different skills and strengths. So you might have the blue sky, innovative, top of mind, and but you also need people with detail. And we're all different and we shouldn't try and be the same as everyone else. So engaging your personal brand is about making sure that you stand out and stand out for the right reasons. And the question is, you know, what are you bringing to the table? What, and you know, to go back to the example of 50,000 applicants, every, there'll be so many of those who will have the same qualifications and the same skill set. But you need to stand out in a different way by what your softer skills are, what values you have, what personality traits. And increasingly, and one of the reasons why personal branding is so important is that there's a move towards value-based recruitment. I mean, a few years ago, um, Goldman Sachs, they had a strike by their interns, which is, is pretty interesting really, because Goldman Sachs, for those, for those of you who do know, a huge venture capitalist company pay huge wages, but they get the creme de la creme from universities, but they expect to own you. You know, you don't, you might not sleep for three days. That's a perfectly viable transaction. It's transactional. And if that's what you want, it's perfectly viable. But then interns went on strike because they were working too hard. So my point would be that they are not getting people with the right values, the values that match their own. And, you know, since the advent of the millennials, most millennials are much more about trying to find a match of values. And it's, an, it's really important to an employer because if you have a match of, if your employees match the employer's values, it's well documented that they tend to be more content and therefore more engaged, more productive, 
and they stay longer. And when you think about the cost of recruiting any one individual in the company, organizations want you to stay longer because they've invested in you with training. You know what you're doing, you're delivering. And to then to go and have to recruit and train somebody else, it costs a lot of money. So it's a really good idea to get values and match of values and a personal brand really helps you do that because you can match the values which are important to you with those of an organization um and then the other thing of course with personal brand and branding is how do you, how well do you talk about yourself now it's something everybody hates doing everybody no matter how long you've been doing it, you still hate talking about yourself but it's a truth you need to learn how to do it in a very professional manner as well. I don't know if you have the um, a TV programme, which we have here in the UK, and I know it's been on in the States, which is The Apprentice. And, and they're all vying to get sponsorship or a job. And when you see them start, the arrogance and the overconfidence they talk about themselves is laughable. And of course, then they fall flat on their face. So talking about yourself professionally is not about saying I'm the best thing since sliced bread, but it's being able to communicate in an effective and engaging manner. Why you? Why me? Why should I be taken? What have I got that makes me special and makes me unique? And that is where thinking about it and putting the effort in to think about your brand um, will really help you do that. Um, because that's where a personal brand can really help. And I think this is a moment I want to just talk about what a, a brand means, because the term brand is one I've, although I've worked in it most of my adult career, it's one I'm beginning to dislike because it is so misused. There is so much, there's very little understanding in a lot of places about what a brand is. A lot of people think a brand is merely the logo and what it looks like, you know, is it purple? What's the icon like? Therefore, they think a personal brand is simply about how you cut your hair, what clothes you wear. A brand is so much more than that. For us, a brand in an organization is actually the foundation, the very core of the organization, which sets the whole strategic direction. It defines your vision, your mission, your proposition, which is the overall benefits you give, your personality, i.e. how you speak and communicate, um, and also um, your um, reasons to believe and, of course, your values. And similarly, a personal brand is about that. What a personal brand really is, is a strategic framework through which you can communicate who you are and get to stand out and, and engage with the right people. So it's about trying to um, structure your public persona so that people understand what makes you special, why you're different, what your strengths are, and really who you are. Of course, it will say a little bit, you, you know, and it, it, it also depends on what job you're going for. I mean, if you're if you're going to for a sharp city job, then you're probably a lawyer, you'll need the wig and the gown and the sharp suit. But if you're doing something more engaging with people, yes, so, so clothes are important to a certain extent, but that's not the core of what it is. The core of what it is, is what makes you different, what makes you stand out, what's the very core. And it's a strategic help for you on your career so you know exactly how to go on social media, how what sort of CV, what you say about yourselves. You know, Jeff Bezos puts it very well. He says, you know, your brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. And I think, you know, exactly what he means. What impression do you give people? Well, how, what image do you create in the minds of people you interact with? How would they describe you? And defining your personal brand and developing it is simply about trying to take control of that so that you communicate the image you want to communicate, not the one that inevitably others will give you. And so, so the question then is, how do you create your personal brand? You know, it might sound a bit, oh dear, it's all, I don't know quite how I'll go about this. What do I want to do? Well, in one sense, it's very easy because what it is, it defines, I mean, you probably know, I just mentioned with an ordinary brand, there are several elements, the vision, mission, values, proposition, et cetera. With um, this a personal brand, uh, there's a model we use, which has four elements. It has your vision, which is about your goals and ambitions. So if you looked forward 25 years, where, where would you like 
yourself to be? What would you like to see you've you've done? You know, and this is over and above the money. You know, how would you see? What do you want to achieve in that time? Your personality. We all have different personalities. Some of us are outgoing. Some of us aren't. Some of us have attention to detail. Some of us don't. But we all have strengths and characteristics of what we are. And we. It's about building on those and seeing that those as strengths and, make, and turning those into professional ways of looking at yourself, your professional personality. Values, they're the behaviours, the behaviours you espouse, which really you, you, the DNA, which would cut you open, that would be what you stood for. We've mentioned that, about how important that is to have a meeting of that between employee and employer. So that would be the third. And then the final one, and we do this, unlike a lot of brand consultancies in our ordinary brands, we believe you have to prove it. You have to evidence things. And it's all very well saying, you know, I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. But if you haven't got the achievements and the skills and the talents that you can show to back it up, then you may as well not say it. And that will also really help you when you're going forward into CDs and interviews. So what a, a person brand will do, it really helps you it really helps build your confidence that fundamentally that's what it's doing it's going to help which as a leader or potential leader is something you really will undoubtedly want to do because it helps you express what you are about what makes you different and it helps you do that in a very clear and concise way which means if you're we all know that i mean we have so many pieces of communication bombarded at us every single day the brands that are the clearest, the most, and that express themselves clearly, consistently, and cohesively are the brands we actually buy into and, and stand and will stand out. And it's exactly the same for a personal brand. If you're very clear about what your strengths are and you reiterate them, you will stand out because your confusion, chaos doesn't help anyone to build a, a strong picture. And that's what you want. So it will help you stand out in the crowd and it will give you a strategy for managing your public image. Obviously, social media is so important nowadays. You know, LinkedIn, particularly in a business professional context, and I know Kate's going to go on and talk about that, but also, you know, the other channels you might use. And it'll help you have a strategy for who should I follow? What kind of post should I do? What should I be saying about myself? Because you know what image you want to create. Inevitably, because you've done all this thinking and clarified and honed, it will help you improve your CV. You'll have more over and above the academic qualifications. It'll help you know what to say in a covering letter and in your interview technique. You know, you're, if somebody asks you what are you about in that 30 second lift thing, you'll be able to say immediately what makes you different. And it certainly will help you develop your leadership skills. So how do you do it? Well, there are four things you really need to ask yourself. And the first one is, um, what makes me special? Why am I different? What's good about me that makes me different? What makes me unique? And then another one is what's important to me? What are the behavioral traits which I think are so important and I want to live by? Third one is what do I want to achieve? Because that helps set your goals and know what you want to deliver against. And then finally, the other, the fourth question is, um, how am I going to get there? You know, how am I going to get through this maze? What am I going to say? What am I going to do? It gives you the route to get there. And then tr and sum it up in, you know, a very short paragraph. So you've got it in the top of your head. You know, as soon as somebody asks you what you are about and why you're special. And in a sense, that's really all there is to it. And we've got it in two. I, it sounds like most things which are quite clear and simple, very easy, but it may be a little bit harder to actually answer those questions and be succinct and clear about them um, than you think. But I can talk to you about the programme um, in a minute, which uh, Katie alluded to right at the beginning. So that was a very short and concise look at personal branding and what it is and what it can do so we thought now I don't know if there are any in the questions in the chat or if anybody's got any questions but we'd, we'd love to open the floor to you before I come back and finalize thank you Fenella and I'm, I would I would encourage you if you have a question to click on the reactions bar and raise your hand I'm just going to put an example of that here and that will allow me to to call you out um, by name and whilst you're thinking about your questions, Fenella, I have one actually. Okay. Because, 
No, I've been trying, I've been refining my personal brand for, I don't know, 20 plus years coming out of banking and then having to reinvent myself again and again. And there's something you mentioned about value-based recruitments and matching your values with your company. Now, what would you say to look for if, if I was, if I figured out what my values are, how are you looking to define yourself against a company before you put yourself forward for a role? Well, I, 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 funny enough, I was saying it from a slightly different perspective. I was saying that from an employer's perspective in that they are now beginning to recruit on values base. So they will look at an individual's values and see if they match their values. But I guess it's the same the other way around. A mm. lot of organisations do have their values on their website or you, if you're going for an interview, you can ask them what they are. Sometimes they're a little bit of lip service rather than true reflection of the culture. But I think you, I mean, the first point of call, well, you know, once you've done your personal brand and you know what your values are, you would look at an organisation and you see what they say. And then if you can find anybody who works there or if you go for an interview and, you know, quite often you have a more relaxed one with some of the team, you can ask about the culture and the values of the organisation and see whether it really fits you because culture is so important as a fit for, for the future. So that's what I would recommend in that sense. I mean, it is hard sometimes if companies are not totally honest about their values, but they put them on the website, so they should be living up to them. Yeah, I like thank you for that, Fernanda, because that was a different perspective back. And it's funny because I've got to a stage now where I, I look at where I want to work now. And so I'm always yeah. looking at how they align to me. Whereas I think when you're going through the first stages of developing yourself you're always worried about what they like about you and actually exactly you, exactly yeah, you need to turn, you, you eventually will turn the tables around well thank you for answering that so I'm going to go over to California and P would you like to ask a Hi. question um again I'm Payel Powell I run a manufacturing business out here in the Bay Area at this point um and I've always kind of been trying to work towards proactively putting my brand out into the world um I probably do a pretty good job with my company, but like from a personal perspective, it's been different um, or difficult, I'd say. I have found historically that like that, that paragraph about like who I am comes out when people ask for it. Yeah. But like when it comes to actually, you know, taking the leap and proactively putting my brand into the world, do you have any insights or suggestions for how to kind of make that leap to not necessarily reactively showing my personal brand, but proactively putting my personal brand into the world? Well, I, I think the first thing, you need to define it very clearly as to what you are in those four sections. And once you've got that, I think it's a question, again, probably linked to a sector you're in, and maybe your manufacturing sector, or, or maybe even your clients if you want it to be that, and then you start following, you know, people who talk about the things which are important to you and you start posting in the context of your personality, your values, what you're talking about, what you're interested in, but in line with how you have defined your brand and you put it that way and you you know it's very hard sometimes to get articles written or or you know and, and accepted but LinkedIn is a very good place to start where you post you follow organizations which fit with your brand values and your brand interests and you you as your person your your definition and then you create posts which reflect how you stand and who you are so I mean that would be I mean you know that's the easiest way to to answer it and without spending lots of money because that's always the other but I think LinkedIn and any other social media um channel is the first place to start because people will look at you there especially if you're looking for a job they'll often you know potentials will um, um check you out so they will read what you've written and they will see what you're interested in and they'll see how you react to things it's not necessarily about having the biggest number but it's about having you know a few key points on there which are, are clear and react to you so, so that would be the best way i think in a in a simple way i appreciate that thank you thank you we've got stephanie who has a question as well over to you stephanie Hi there. How are you doing today? Hi. <laughs> this is so awesome. I thank you all for just um, with the forward thinking. I need help with branding. And the reason why, I mean, I say that is because I've been in the healthcare field for 20 plus years. 
And I'm also the executive director of Global Chamber Austin. So when I look at my page or employers look at my play page, they see a lot of Global Chamber comments and activities and my healthcare is getting lost. So I think I'm hearing you say, maybe focus on what my values are, which is healthcare and, and healthcare is global. So I can start posting more global healthcare um, things, which I do when I talk about healthcare issues, like I think we did last month, um, healthy heart, this month, healthy hearts for women. So I, I had an employer ask me like, gosh, you're all, you, you have a lot of things going on. You know, it seems like you're doing a lot because they see a lot of global chamber. I'll, I'll um, share some of my colleagues if they're doing things in their region. I'll post that there as well on LinkedIn. But I think I probably need to start posting a lot more healthcare global initiatives or values that I believe in so that when employers do look at my or, or people look at my page, they see a they see my healthcare strength. Is that would you say that? Yes, I will definitely say, I mean, it's very difficult, isn't it? Because I think a lot of us have wear many hats and we have different things. And we do need to balance it. You don't want to let your healthcare persona die or, you know, go down because you're doing so much global train. But I guess there are two ways of doing it. Yes, one, I mean, a brand is more than just LinkedIn, obviously, but there are things you can do. But in terms of your LinkedIn profile, I think, yes, you, you probably should be posting more. And I don't know, sometimes is you can split, you can have two, can't you? Although that might be confusing, you know, one global, which is focused on global chamber and that kind of, and one which is you can link them, but which is you as a healthcare specialist. So if that's, you know, if one is drowning out the other, you might want to think about that. But yes, in terms of your brand, if you are not posting or communicating your values, what you believe in and what you're interested in and your core, then you do need to do more of that and find the right way to do that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And I, I can really resonate with that. Having a portfolio business, it is really important to to think about your messaging and how you your language is when you talk about the companies that you represent and the work you're doing. And I think at the heart of everything, just talk about what you did, what you're doing um, and for who. And I think that that's, that's just my tip because it's taken me about three years to refine that and I'm still working on it. But <laughs> it is a it's a conflict of identity because what, when I see, when I think about where you put your brand, it's about who are you? Who are you talking to as you as a person, not to Global Chamber, you know, not to house brands? Who are you as a person and how do you demonstrate that? So I, I, that's a work in progress, but that's such a good point, Stephanie. And I'm sure there's so many people on the call and will be listening in thinking the same thing because the future of business isn't just about doing one thing anymore. Just no. throwing that out there. Um, right. Now, do we have any other questions for Fenella? Hi, this is Nicole Turner. I am the deputy Hi, director from Global Chamber Atlanta. Hi. Hi, and I do have a question. Most recently, I went through a transition in career. I am a lawyer by trade, but I also have a finance background. And so I moved primarily from um, when I was working as a lawyer, then I moved to teaching um, uh, perspective on law school students. And so now I'm using my financial background. And so I had to make a transition in rebranding myself. And so what advice do you have for those who are doing the same thing? Well, firstly, I think, I mean, again, I would the first place of call is always to look at that strategy and we're going to show you you know those questions you remember the model your vision whatever so that will change and that's fine it changes so you probably need to redo that strategy which will then eat you from go from being the lawyer to the teaching lawyer with a financial background and then that will raise the questions as to okay the values what i stand for i need to be a bit different so what what um 
things can I do in order to upweight what I've done in the past, which is finance. And so you, you, so you just got to focus a bit. You, you need to do the strategy. It'll show you where to focus. And then you start communicating those slightly different focuses more strongly than you have the law. So you might start following different people. You might start posting a bit more about finance than law or linking. So you have to look at what you've been saying and make sure it's with your new strategy, but do your new strategy first. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does make sense. And, and I believe I was successful in doing that. But um, to piggyback what, uh, what you've also have said was to uh, build your brand on LinkedIn. An employer did find me on LinkedIn and I um, do have a new position. And so going wow. through that process really did help in, in, in just learning how to move from one brand strategy to another. But it is possible. Yeah, brilliant. That's good to know. That, but well done, Nicole, and thank you for your input. Fenella, I wonder if you'd like to take the um, the participants through the actual tool so that they have yes. availability to that if they'd like to take it further. Sure. I'm very happy to do that. I'm still sharing, aren't I? Yes, sorry. But probably so we have a tool which is a brand, um, personal brand development tool. It's an online program which anybody can do because all the instructions are, are there it's the only one of its kind you know it's not a program where you have to come or you don't have to buy lots of books but it's a personal branding development toolkit which will help you set your strategy very clearly and it talks you through so what it is is it's um, an online toolkit it's very simple it's effective and enjoyable it has just four steps which have all the instructions there and at the end of it you will have your strategic personal brand and it will help you and it will act as the blueprint just as any brand definition does for all the activity you're going to do your cv your covering letters your personal statements your social media which obviously is one very important element but just one and all your conversations and networking so what you say about yourself how you come over what kind of um, what you're going to write what you're going to say what you're going to look like it will help you define all of that and as you can see there's a worksheet on the right it's based around four steps with a worksheet in each, which you just work through. There are guidance notes, there are tips, there are examples. So you fill it. We, we've done everything we can apart from do it for you because we can't do it for you because we're not you and you're all unique. So we've used our commercial brand experience to bring it over to develop this personal brand toolkit. Nobody needs any experience because we hold your hand. My um, colleague, Chris, is very strict about using very plain English so everybody can understand it, not being too fancy, being very clear. As I said, tips and examples, it really is, is written in plain English. Very four simple sets and then the, the interactive worksheets which you fill in and you just go and get your guidance notes when you're there and they give you start points or we give you start points. So it is, I mean, You've got to do the reflection. That's the hard bit. But this really helps you reflect in the right way. It asks you the right questions. It makes you think about yourself in the right way so you can do it. Um, and, you know, it really will do what a personal brand does do, which is really help you know what to say about yourself and how to say it so that, you know, it's professional and good. It will build confidence and we've, we've, it's been used on a few programs, employability programs. We have a couple. We have one which is more professional, you know, lawyers, people. And then we have one which is being used for people who are have long term unemployed and ex-offenders. And they're using it to help give them confidence to get back into work. But obviously they're different, different examples, different language. But the principle is the same. And it really will help you stand out and bolster all your communications. And importantly, it'll help you, and it's so important in these days, to manage your, your public image and how you come over, how you present yourself to the world, how you build that public persona. And then just to say a few things that people have said about it, you know, we in Ghana, we're working with young graduates in national service, people are finishing that there, you know. They found it very simple to understand. It made them think, that's what everybody says, it really makes you think about what I'm about and then helps you refine that and write about it succinctly. Um, you know, writing about myself, but in a professional way. 
And then, you know, actually, sometimes when you do TV, we all leave it to the last minute and then you can't remember everything. But there's a whole repository here of all your achievements, you know, even if it's something like, you know, cooking family meals when you were 15 because your mum was out of work or whatever it is, you can capture all that. So it's really um, a great repository and people are sometimes surprised at how much they've actually done. And then it's, um, we normally retail it for £37.50, but we have an offer price for anyone on the Young Global Leader Scheme, which is £25. Um, and there's a discount code there you want. But if anybody wants to know more about it, there's um, the email whyme at housebrandstoolkits.online and we can show it to you. But it's, it's a very logical, simple, straightforward programme where you do the work, but it helps you do the work in the right way. And I think that's all I would say. I'd love to show it to you sometime. No, I'll do it here. But... Well, you, yeah, and, and if there's enough people interested, I think you're happy to do a workshop as well. Yeah, with, yeah with absolutely. So, and look, honestly, thank you so much for that offer. It really is important that we offer something that you guys can take away and do more with. And so, Vanilla, just a big virtual round of applause to you for your expertise yeah. today. I was writing down things thinking, wow, I need to probably revisit that myself because we're always evolving and changing. And, and I think the next part of our workshop today is going to be, um, we're going to be hearing from another guest speaker who isn't with us today, but she has certainly put her voice on a video. She's going to talk about, as a LinkedIn coach, Sarah Clay, LinkedIn coaching, yeah. she works with directors globally to help them to put their brand on their LinkedIn page. And also she's probably going to reflect a few things you've already said today, Fenella. However, she's going to talk a little bit about what next. And I talked a little bit earlier about having a Rembrandt and stick it in the garage. We want to put that Rembrandt on the wall. So once you've gone through all this work to develop your brand, what next? So if you bear with me, I'm going to share the, the video of Sarah Clay. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it. So it only goes for about 10 minutes, guys. Um, Thank you very much, by the way. Let me just uh, reshare that. Oh, thank you. We're going to do some more Q&A at the end. So you're still going to have Vanilla um, at the end if you want to ask more questions. Here we go. Hey, hey, I'm Sarah Clay. I'm a LinkedIn coach and I work with companies, with universities, with students, helping them love and leverage LinkedIn. So today I'm going to be talking about branding and how you can brand yourself on LinkedIn and create yourself and maintain yourself as a brand on LinkedIn. But first of all, what I'm going to talk about is what is a brand and why? Why should you create one? So what is a brand? According to Wikipedia, I'm going to read this, a brand is a name, a term, design, symbol, or any other feature that distinguishes one seller's good or service from that of the others. So it's not just the colours that a company uses in its marketing materials. It's not a logo or just a strap line. It's so much more than that. Yes, it is all of these things, but it's the culture that's embedded within the company. It's the way the company lives, eats, breathes and sleeps. So what does that mean to you? You're not a company. You're not selling goods or services, are you? You, my lovely people, are selling the most important thing that you own. You're selling yourselves. As young global leaders, you want people to buy or hire you. So you may have heard of the phrase know, like and trust. What this means is that when people know you and like you, they're more likely to trust you. And the next step in this process is purchase. So people only buy from people that they trust. So in your case, your future employer will only hire you if they know you, like you and trust you. So in order to get people to know you, like you and trust you, it's important that you create your own brand on LinkedIn. So as Wikipedia says, your brand is what distinguishes you from your competitors. Your brand is your personality. It's how you talk. It's what you talk about. It's how you interact with others. It's what you read. It's what you do at the weekend. 
So basically, your brand is all of those things that makes you, you. So I'm a firm believer that we should live, eat and sleep our brand. The stronger our brand message, the more people will remember it. So for individuals like you, you can do this in so many different ways on LinkedIn. And today, right now, I'm going to give you 10, not 8, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, but 10 tips for expressing your brand on LinkedIn. Okay, number one is to optimize your LinkedIn profile for search. So starting with your headline, 220 characters, you need to be really clear about what it is that you want. Think about what your future employers need to know about you and structure your LinkedIn headline accordingly. If, for example, you work in HR, talk about HR and use keywords. So keywords are those words which people use when they're looking for your industry or your services. So let's use the example of HR. You need to be using keywords like HR, human resources, employers, employees, company culture. If you talk about all of those things in your headline, when people are looking for somebody to hire for those services, then you're going to come up in that search. Okay. Number two is to show your face and your voice. Okay. So if people know what you look like and what you sound like, they feel they know you much better. Have you ever bumped into a celebrity or seen a celebrity in the street? Somebody that you've seen on TV in a soap or presenting a TV program or something? You feel like you know them, don't you? Because you've seen them on TV so often. So you can create that familiarity by three ways on your profile. Number one, having an up-to-date profile photo. So people go to your profile and they see your smiling face right there. Number two is by creating a profile video. This is quite a new tool and it sits behind your profile photo and it's a 30 second video. And the third way is to use your voice record. So this is 10 seconds and you can record a little 10 second message. So use these three tools to get yourself out there and show yourself who you are and show others who you are on LinkedIn. Number three is to sell yourself in your about section. So you've got 2,600 characters in your about section. Use them. Please use as many as you can. Now, this is not a CV. This is a chance to tell your story. So talk about your wins, your achievements, things that you've done in the past. Talk about how clever you are, but in a non-salesy way. Number four is to use your banner. You can use your banner, which is the biggest visual tool you have on LinkedIn to tell more of your story or to tell parts of your story in a pictorial way. So let's say you've got an unusual hobby or you've done something quite interesting and wacky for charity, like, I don't know, abseil down a building. Let's put that photo up on your banner and it's a conversation starter and it's something else about you. Number five, previous employment. So even if you're straight out of university and you've had holiday jobs, part-time jobs, these are just as valid as full-time jobs. So talk about these jobs, talk about any volunteer experience as well, and tell people not just that you did that particular job or you volunteered in this particular place, but what did you bring with you? What did you add when you were there? And what did you learn? while you were working or volunteering in that place. Number six is to showcase yourself as an expert with engaging content. So LinkedIn is giving us more and more opportunities to showcase and create really great content on LinkedIn. By creating really good content, you can show how much you know about your industry. You can use links to articles to show that you read around your subject. And you can use keywords in these posts as well to help your content get found more easily. 
There are so many different styles of posts now on LinkedIn, so use all of them and vary your content. Number seven already is to join relevant conversations. So if you don't go out on LinkedIn and talk to different people, how will they know that you're there? Use the search bar at the top to find people that you can go and engage on their posts. You can go and start commenting on their posts, add value, add your opinion. Don't show off, don't be controversial necessarily, but adding your opinion to somebody else's post is a really clever way of starting a conversation and getting to know somebody. Number eight. <laughs> is to make close connections. So don't just use a sort of splatter gun approach and saying hi, 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 hi to everybody. Choose a few people that you really want to get to know, perhaps they're potential employers, or perhaps they can lead you or connect you to a potential employer and start building relationships with these particular people. Don't be frightened to use direct messaging. Don't be frightened to ask for a meeting or a call in order for you to further your career. Number nine is to join industry groups. So groups on LinkedIn are a bit hit and miss, I won't, I won't lie to you, but they're, you know, they're only as good as the people that are running the actual group. But dip your toe in, have a look at some groups, ask to join a few groups and see how it feels, because joining groups is a really clever way of getting your brand in front of an engaged and relevant audience. And finally, be consistent. So the most important thing is to be consistent on LinkedIn in two ways. The first way is to be consistent with your branding and with your brand. So talk about similar things, use a similar tone of voice all the time, and then people will know, they'll know what to expect when they read your posts and they read your comments. And this will in turn cause people to feel more secure with you and to trust you. And the second consistency on LinkedIn is when you're there. So if you're posting on LinkedIn, create a schedule. So don't post three times one week and then not the next week. You're much better off appearing once a week with your content to build that trust and that familiarity. Try and hop onto LinkedIn every single day, just for 10 minutes. Comment on a few posts and therefore you're keeping your face out there. You're keeping your presence on LinkedIn and your brand on LinkedIn. And the more you do this, your brand is going to go stronger and stronger. Okay, I'm going to whiz through those titles again. So optimize your LinkedIn profile for search. Show your face and your voice in your profile. Sell yourself in your about section. Use your banner to add to your story. Talk about previous employment and volunteering opportunities. Create engaging content to showcase yourself as an expert. Join relevant conversations. Make close connections. Join industry groups and be consistent. So there you go, folks. 10 tips to help you create and maintain your brand on LinkedIn. I really hope these have been helpful. Please come over to LinkedIn, follow me. And if you click the little bell icon just below my banner, that'll make sure that you get my content in your feed. You've been amazing. I've been Sarah Clay. I hope to see you soon over on LinkedIn. Wow, round of applause for Sarah. And on that note, I'd love for all of us to share our LinkedIn profiles and let's start connecting. Um, one of the beauties of bringing all of our young global leaders together in this community is so that you can grow your community and you can learn to leverage your network. So please pop your LinkedIn profiles in there. And I thought we could, um, we've got quite a few minutes left to open up for Q&A or even storytelling about maybe something that has worked for you or hasn't worked for you in, in the, the branding space so far, because we've got Fenella, Chris, myself, we've got other senior leaders on the call, and this is a really great space for us to explore those ideas. So again, if you've got something to say, please use the reaction hands up bar. Otherwise, please unmute and go ahead.
I know we're all busy getting our LinkedIn profiles popped into the chat right now. Whilst we're waiting, um, one of the things that uh, stood out for me and one of the things I have been working on um, is previous employment because there's always myths around what should I put, what are people going to think? And I think there's something that Sarah talks about in make sure you put it in there, but there's actually a content piece where you can actually write a story about the work you did there. And I just wanted to sort of add that in there because that's really quite powerful. Um, and you can see that I've done that on my own LinkedIn profile. If you haven't already done that, that's a great tip. And I'm still yet to do the video thing because it's a very self-conscious thing to do. But that, that is my goal this year is to update my LinkedIn profile effectively. Fenella, have you got any thoughts on what to take forward after you do the, the why, why me? Um, yeah, yeah, well, I think the consistency was one of the things that, that stood out, not just when you post, but being consistent in the way you talk and your values and what your content is. So I, th I thought that was, you know, that really does gel with what we're saying. And yeah, I mean, I'm just slightly embarrassed because I'm not sure my LinkedIn profile really does all the things that it should do. But I'm very happy to connect with anyone on LinkedIn. It's one of those things when, you know, you think, oh, I must do something, I must do something. You don't, but I was quite inspired. I must do something more on it. But yes, I, you know, being consistent and joining relevant conversations and, you know, those bits, I think. And, you know, previous employment, I think, is interesting. And But I do think it depends on whether you're looking to be employed or whether you're looking to do your own brand. And I think there's slight difference into as to what you might put on, depending, you know, what your ambition is going forward. Oh, you've got mute, I think. Oh, yes, that's classic. Do you know, that's a very good point to make there. It's about, you know, what what's the story that you're telling about yourself? And I think what I've taken from today is clearly you need to write the story before you can tell it. And you can't have one without the other. And I think by sitting down and taking some deep reflective practice around who you really are and what you stand for um, is the first step to take before then communicating that to the rest of the world, putting it on your CV, putting it on your company website. You know, there's a lot of work that goes into redefining that. And of course, it never stays the same, does it? It's always an evolving thing. It's like a moving object. So it's not just a once off thing. It's about continuing to check in with yourself and check in yeah. where you're at currently. Yeah, but I think you need to sort of get it right and then leave it for a while and then you come back and review it because otherwise you spend your whole time doing it and we all need to get on with our real lives, as it were, you know, putting it into practice and getting the results of all that. Absolutely. One thing I've seen with a, a variety of individuals my age who I've looked at their their LinkedIn's and talked to them about them because I, I love like updating my LinkedIn profile. Um, I've worked on it and iterated it a lot. I've, I've heard a lot of people say like, oh, you know, once I put down everything I've done, it's going to look so cluttered. And like, I, I went through that kind of process myself where I said like, this is the only place in the world right now I know that I can put everything I've done. I'm going to go ahead and try that and see what happens. So I did. A few years ago and what I ended up figuring out is that like you know these 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 profiles they give you a framework and they say put in information like so and this is a starting point but what I was able to do is I was able to go in and say like oh you know this set of experiences like rolls up into a bracketed set of experiences so I can kind of talk about them holistically and, and certain things like that make my profile work for me and I just like, I want to pass on that kind of insight because I it took me probably six or seven years of, of really playing with it to get to that point where I went, my LinkedIn profile is mine. It's a, yeah. it's got an outline, but it's mm -hmm. mine I can make it what I want. And so I encourage anybody who like feels like theirs doesn't have everything about themselves to go ahead and just actually dump everything in and then work it down and really make it you and cohesive and concise. Thank you so much, pal. That's a very good, that, that's a really good um, story to share about how you approached developing your LinkedIn profile, because it is about working on it, isn't it? It's about yeah. refining it. Um, so very good. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I'd like to invite, if there's any other stories within the group, would you like to share? Well, thank I you, everybody. Like to, I would like to ask something to Fenella. 
Yes, just just yep. it's more of a you know it's a personal case. So I'm a I'm a full time with the global chamber, but I've been for many years, um, part owner of a family business, a small you know small restaurant, and I'm wondering I, I don't have any of that information on my LinkedIn or or even my my CV or anything. It's just like two different things happening. Um, I wonder if it makes sense to add that or if it makes sense just to keep it as it is. Hang on. Oh, yeah. I think it, it might be, but it, I think it depends what you want to achieve. But I think it's a shame not to give a holistic um, picture of yourself if it can help in some way. And obviously you do do things with the restaurant and that can help you and that develops skills. So I think it's a way of looking at what, what does that mean? What have I achieved from that? What has that given me? And then that fitting that in because perhaps it makes you better at dealing with all the sorts of varied businesses and people who are on the global chamber. I don't know what the answer is off the top of my head, yeah. but I think it would be good to look at it and see what that's brought you and how you can fit that in so that you are a more complete picture and people can know more about you and then will look at you in a different way. But it does depend to a certain extent what you want to do, but I'm sure it's given you skills and I think it would be a shame not to. Yeah, no, definitely skills. about the, the skill side. So that's why I asked. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that. Pleasure. And that's in interesting because I just learned something very new about you, Sar, and after <laughs> working with you several years, and this is about yes. that building that personal connection with people. So um, very interesting point. And I think as we as we move to the end of the hour, I just wanted to to take a moment um, to, to say thank you to Fenella and Chris for bringing your expertise today um, with House Brands. Thank you for the offer. Um, I think that's a great opportunity for everybody in our community to excel in, in developing their brand. Thank you to Sarah Clay for her insights on LinkedIn as well. And for all of your participation today, it wouldn't be the same if we, we didn't have interactive sessions like this. Now, before we close, I just wanted to share again the barcodes and invite Doug, our CEO and founder of Global Chamber, just to say a few words um, about the program and about what's upcoming. Doug, would you like to take the floor? Do we have Doug on the courses, Are I'm not sure. I, I see another. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I see another global chamber there. So I guess. Well, Cesar, would, you, would you like to say a few words about the program from a global chamber headquarter perspective in terms of what we've got in store and the work that's going on? Yeah, sure, and, and and thanks, Katie, for for running um, this month session, and and so the whole idea of the program is to um, to give something to our, you know, students, young professionals, or young entrepreneurs around the world, and we have universities and we have um, some organizations that are partner with the Global Chamber, and so this is a way to put them all together and and offer a value for them. I don't know if I'm breaking up. Because I'm having some some Fine. connection. Okay, so so this, this is the first one of ten sessions, as Katie mentioned earlier, and and we're gonna be rotating the 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 host or the moderators, and next month it's gonna be William, who's based in Singapore, and I understand he's gonna be covering um something on AI, and then the month after we're gonna have. Um, Dan Austin and Nicole Turner, who are here today, covering on financial literacy. So we're going to be covering different hot topics that are of interest for 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 the younger generation. And at the end, as Katie mentioned, we're going to have a a program. We're going to deliver certificates for those who has been participating in the sessions, and and with the idea of this being the first of many years of covering this this program. So again. You can um, scan the, the QR code or I, or I put the links um, earlier in the chat and and feel free to reach out to me if you have any, any questions or comments about the program. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Cesar. And, and in terms of the work that goes into developing a project like this, we have young global leaders around the world who are forming a board to manage this program, to support the executive directors. We have the Fenellas and Chris's from House Brands in our community stepping up with their expertise 
um, to share good knowledge, become thought leaders within the business. So thank you very much for your participation, for everybody's involvement in bringing this project to life. Um, this is the first session of many to come this year, and I've been really excited to host it with you. Please reach out and connect with one another. Reach out and connect with me. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the program. You know, we are here to serve you and we want to make sure that we're delivering the right topics for you. So please reach out to us. And on that note, um, we will end the session. Good evening Thank and good morning to all of you. Thank Thanks, you very Stella. much. Thank, Great. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.